What's going on everybody? It's your boy Lario. I'm in the studio and today we're gonna run through three dope ways on how to make your beat tags better. If you don't know how to make beat tags, I'm gonna show you how to make your own beat tags from scratch in FL Studio. You get me. So I already have a beat tag recorded. As you guys know, it's uh you, know, you get me. You get me. So we're gonna take that one and we're gonna drop that into FL Studio. First things first is we're gonna normalize it throw the generic bleeding on it so that way if you guys don't know what the generic bleeding does it's a de-clicking mode so you don't get any clicks or pops at the beginning of your audio clips which is a really really dope feature what you can do is use smooth bleeding this is a more a way more harsh crossfade nine times out of ten I'm using the generic bleeding we're gonna send that to an audio uh, mixer track we're gonna turn this volume down here so it doesn't clip out and get too crazy so the first way we can do a beat tag, really, really simple. We can go with a simple EQ reverb and maybe like a chorus stereo widening effect. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and make that sound pretty interesting. First thing is we're gonna put on a parametric EQ2. You can go to the presets and you can go to the radio preset. You get me. Uh, I always do the EQ like last unless I put multiple EQs on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll that EQ down a couple of slots and I'm gonna go put in a uh, Fruity Reverb too. Change the shape, maybe let's make it small. Change the low cut, add some stereo separation and adjust the wet and the decay a little bit. You get me. It's pretty good. You get me. I usually hold off on any echoes or delays until I put it in my beat itself because every tempo to every beat is gonna be slightly different. If you think you're gonna use a delay on your beat tags, I would wait until it goes into your beat itself. I'm gonna throw like a chorus effect on there just to like spice it up a little bit and give it some like stereo width. I usually just go with the first preset whenever I throw this chorus effect on. Nothing really wild about it. And I just uh, adjust the mix knob. You get me. And then I'll adjust some stereo separation down here on the mixer as well. You get me. I'll go with the fruity limiter. Usually I use like an L3, but I'll show you guys just a stock limiter. You get me. Adjust the gain. You get me. You get me. I'll even throw a distortion on there for you guys and see what that sounds like. We'll go with the the fruity blood overdrive. There's a preset on here that's pretty dope. I think you just go to drive right here. You get me. So let's try putting that first in the mix in the in the chain right now. You get me. You get me. You get me. You get me. Pretty dope. So that's the first way you can edit a beat tag. I'm gonna show you the second way. This is pretty cool. It's like a glitch style effect. It doesn't have to really be on tempo because the glitch is gonna be super fast and it's gonna sound dope on any tempo really. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this first little audio clip right here, chop it with the razor tool. We're gonna make this unique. So now you can hear this is just, <laughs> just that little piece at the beginning, right? So what we're gonna do is copy and paste that. Also turn the generic bleeding on here so we get some nice clean cross fades. And we're gonna go right up to the beginning of this audio clip with that first one. And then just like put a little bit of a space in between these to get that nice fast glitch effect. You're gonna really wanna go into this. You're gonna have to zoom in and turn your snap off by holding the alt key and dragging the mouse around. That'll turn the snap off so you can get really, really tight and really tight uh, glitches with that effect. You get me. So that's pretty dope. Another thing that you can do with that is click this little menu button, go to automate and choose the volume automation. It's like a quick automation feature, which is really, really dope. You get me. You can also do a fast panning automation as well. You can bring that guy down there. And I like to go left, right, left, right on these. You get me. You get me. Maybe a little too harsh on the panning, but you guys get the point. So the third way I'm gonna show you guys, let's do this. We'll bring it into a new mixer track so it has zero effects on it. Next thing is, this is key right here. We're gonna give this a nice stereo wide effect, kind of like those radio commercials that you hear. Uh, where it sounds like one of them is in the left and one of them is in the right completely. It gives, it, gives you that like weird stereo vibe. I'm going to show you how to make that. Next thing we're going to do is bring it down, duplicate it, 
right? Then we're gonna make this one unique. So now these are two different audio clips. So with the first one, we're gonna pan it all the way to the left. The second one, we're gonna pan it all the way to the right. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna offset it a little bit so these two are completely out of time with each other. So when you play that back, just like that, it's gonna give it a nice wide stereo effect. Check it out. You get me. So if you're wearing headphones right now, or if you have a pair of speakers, I don't know, it's, it's really pleasing to the ear when you hear that kind of stuff. It gives it that stereo wide effect. And especially with a beat tag, it's gonna make it stick out. So if you want people to pay attention to your beat tag, that's definitely a dope way to do it. One more thing with this one, we'll do the reverse reverb effect. Chop the beginning of that sample again, bring it down here so it's by itself. I'm gonna throw a reverb on this channel and Edison. So with this reverb, we're gonna make it really big, really big reverb. Turn the wet up, turn the decay up, stereo separation. We're gonna make this reverb huge right now. So arm Edison to record and then just hit play on the playlist. Make sure that this is soloed out as well. You don't want anything else to play through that. So what I just do, I'll just like solo this track out by itself and then just hit play. Let that tail out. I'm gonna bring that in. Normalize, reverse it. What we can do here is make this unique so I can bring the volume up on that reverb tail. And then in the sampler, what we can do is adjust the fade in knob. We'll see what that sounds like. Also make sure that you turn the reverb and the Edison off in that channel. You can delete them if you want, cause you're probably not gonna need them again for this one. Uh, just turn them off just in case though. Generic bleeding. You get me. So another cool thing is you can take this, drop it into the mixer by itself, throw an EQ on that as well. Make sure you throw it into a separate channel, I think. Not having another reverb on the reverse reverb is a good idea, so throw that into its own separate mixer track. You get me! You get me! So you could get really creative with that too. So on the reverse reverb mixer track, what you could do is open up a plugin like Gross Beat and maybe throw a gate on it. But again, the gate is gonna go tempo to tempo, so keep that in mind. Maybe you'll wanna wait until you drop it into your finished beat to do something like this effect that you can do. So we're gonna throw like a gate, like a two beat gate or a, a third gate, a one third gate or a one fourth gate. You get me. You can adjust the mix knob here. You get me. So like I said, it goes tempo by tempo. So make sure stuff like that, any delays, any gates, anything that has you know a tempo to it, wait until you drop it into that finished beat. So those are my top three ways of making beat tags and editing beat tags, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you drop a comment down below, hit that subscribe button, turn on my post notifications if you get me.